Okay, so what we're doing here is an upper blepharoplasty, and what we usually start with is where the natural eyelid creases. Usually the crease is about 8 to 12, 10 millimeters from the eyelash margin. Hers is about 8. If they're not exactly equal, we'll even them up. Then what we've done next here is we've measured the amount of redundant skin. What we want to be careful of is when we look at the eye region, we look at the position of the eyebrow. Normally we want the eyebrow to be at or above the orbital rim in women. And her eyebrows, we talked about it, are a little bit low, but it, it, it shouldn't make a difference. We don't, meaning we don't need to do a brow lift for her to have a nice result with a eyelid surgery. But it's important because this is eyebrow skin in this area. And if we thought we were helping her by removing all of this tissue here, we would actually lower her eyebrow and leave her with the inability to close her eyelid. So those wouldn't be good things. Yeah. Um, but we're not doing that. So we want to be what I would call mm, conservative, but not ultra conservative. So we want to give her a nice aesthetic result. So we're cheating a little bit. We're one or two millimeters into her brow tissue here. And um, smile real big for me if you could. And you can see another thing where her crow's feet are. When we carry this marking out, we usually want to find a little wrinkle or a little crease to put that uh, marking in. Okay, thank you. So this is really the big part of the procedure. I think once we've done this, we just have to stay within our lines here. Feeling is that like the little the injection? Yeah. Yep. The needle is yeah, actually okay. the same size. Um, you'll yeah you'll have a little tiny burning sensation, but uh, it'll it'll be localized. It'll be numb almost immediately. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna kind of pinch you here a little okay. bit. These are my fingernails here. Mm -hmm. Count of three. One. Two, three, it's gonna hurt right here and a little stick. And then there's um so people will call this hydrodissection. We're injecting the local between the skin and the muscle. Mm -hmm. But we also put something called wide ace in here, the same thing that can reverse your filler if you ever needed it to be reversed. Oh, really? Uh huh. It helps it migrate through the, the hmm. skin a little bit easier. You're going to feel one over here, too, okay? One, two, three, stick, sorry. That's actually way less than the Botox, <laughs> so just to let you know. Well, there we go. Maybe it's the Valium, too. I don't <laughs> know. Nah, I don't think that. And multiple. Yeah, I mean, it's like over and over. Yeah. But it's worth it. It might be, yeah, she's in, especially because she's injecting it into my trigger points, you know, so oh, she's putting it into where it's, you know. Um, so we are getting ready to perform an upper blepharoplasty on Janine. We're going to start on her uh, left side. I'm going to go over a few things. And uh, we're going to take a little bit of break. We're going to be on channel 12 live at about 12.06 p.m. with Liz Bonus, and then we're going to come back and we're going to finish the, the right side. Generally speaking, a blepharoplasty is a procedure that takes about uh, 20 to 30 minutes to perform. Um, we, perf we perform blepharoplasty for this redundant, this hooding, this extra skin that we see. And, um, Janine's a good candidate. Most of us are good candidates, and most people should expect or have really high expectations for the outcome of this procedure. It helps you to look more refreshed. Um, it, it, this isn't a Kenny Rogers procedure or a Joan Rivers, for those of you who are old enough to know who uh, those people are. But, uh, but anyway, what we're going to do, I'm gonna, we're going to go ahead and, and switch. We're going to get a close-up of Janine here, and um, we're going to point a few things out. So. So what we've done here is we've marked where the natural eyelid creases. Usually it's about 8 to 10 millimeters from the eyelash margin. And we've made sure that they were equal on both sides. This is a lower marking. Then what we've done is we've measured the amount of redundant eyelid tissue that she has. And we've made this upper marking to connect these two. Um, what we want to be careful is that we're not too aggressive, that we're not removing. This is her eyebrow. This is eyebrow skin, 
And what we don't want to do is we don't want to remove so much skin that we actually pull her eyebrow down or leave her with the inability to close her eye. On the other hand, we want to make sure that we give her a nice aesthetic result. And one of the big things is we see many pay patients who undergo uh, functional or medical blepharoplasty and they end up coming back to us because there's still a lot of hooding or excessive skin in this area. So we're going to walk you through this. It's a little bit graphic. It's not terribly graphic. We've injected the uh, tissue with um, lidocaine, which, uh, which is a local anesthetic, and epinephrine. And the reason why it's all blanched, it looks white here, is because the epinephrine constricts the blood flow. So you'll see we'll lose it. All right, so I'm going to show you a little incision here. What you just saw drip out of there was a little bit of the local anesthetic agent that we put in there. You can use, uh, this is called the 15 blade, it's just a scalpel. We can use a laser, we can use a type of cautery. So what we're going to do here is just real meticulously go ahead and separate the skin. We're going to remove the skin from the underlying muscle. We could remove the muscle at the same time, but it's a little safer just to remove the skin. Okay, so there's really not much bleeding, but we're going to use an instrument called the cautery, bipolar cautery, to just seal any of these blood vessels that we see that want, might want to bleed. And this instrument is also used to help define the crease more, so right along this area often we'll cauterize so that when it heals, she'll have a more defined eyelid crease. Okay, so some of the anatomy here, uh, you can see the muscle here, this is the abicularis muscle, it's a big round muscle that helps us close our eye. It's also the same muscle where a lot of you use Botox in the crow's feet area when we smile. The whitish layer that we start to see here is called the orbital septum, and that's a partition between the other compartments, in this case the fatty compartment of the eyelid. And in the medial area here, we're going to remove a little bit of this. And I'm going to use a Q-tip, a little bit of pressure here. And what you start to see here beneath the orbital septum is one of the compartments, there are two main compartments of orbital fat here. And this is what creates some of that fullness or bulge in your eye. Now, it used to be 20 years ago where we would remove as much of this as we could. That's very exciting when we, when we think we're helping somebody. But the problem is it's, if we remove too much, people get what's called an A-frame deformity. They get a big deficiency of volume here. And that's not necessarily a youthful look. So we're going to remove some of this little injection here you might feel. And all I'm doing here is putting a little more lidocaine in here just so with the cautery she doesn't feel it and the epinephrine so it doesn't bleed. Oh, actually, I guess we don't need a photo. So we're going to trim some of this.
Bean, are you still with us? Yes, I am. I'm just listening. I'm learning. There's another fat component, another fatty compartment here. And do we have a mix? Let's give this a try here. I don't think we need to do much with it for her, but I want to see if I can show it to you. I'll have you hold that, Leslie. And I'll take the Yeah, we'll take it on. If you look real carefully though, let me try to expose it better. You can see this is a whiter fat and this actually has, it's very stem cell rich as opposed to the yellowish fat that we took out here. So you start, can you see that? You can see the difference in, in the color between these two. And um, this tissue actually involutes with with age and you can see if we just keep teasing it out it'll just keep coming but we don't want to we don't want to be too aggressive with this what we call a running subcuticular suture. All that means is that there's a suture that goes from one end to the other underneath its skin. Can you see that okay with the light on it? And so we want to come underneath the skin here. It just stays in for so you see what happened there there's a little tiny bit of bleeding so it's real <clears throat> it's really dry and uh, and we try not to have any bleeding so that we don't have any bruising and sometimes when we're actually closing the incision is where we have the a little bit of bruising occur feel a little bit of tightness as I'm pulling up on this. Sometimes when we're through with this procedure, you'll see what we call little lag ophthalmos. The eyelid might be open for one or two millimeters. Uh, that's temporary. Usually we don't see a lot of that, but it's, that's normal. And once the local wears off and the swelling settles down, mm -hmm. you can see that one little area where we caused a little bit of a bruise. So you can see the way that it's zipped up nicely. So 
So we tie a little knot on the outside there. And so you can see there's a couple little areas that still need a few little sutures. Okay, so put a couple of these in. These sutures, like I say, will stay in usually about a week. Uh, we want patients to be real careful dressing and undressing, rubbing their eyes, all right, so you don't pull the stitch out. get a sense already just looking real quickly at where her natural crease now will be that's where we measured it the extra skin is gone and we're going to come back in maybe an hour or so and we're going to finish the uh, the right side 